mood. It is an abstract concept, but it has a face. You can understand which mood the person is in from his glance, facial expressions, and gestures. We decided to get to the bottom of Anastasia's low mood. As the girl feels apathy and fatigue for about a month, the cause of her depressed state may lie in physiology. Whether this is so will be clear after the biochemical blood test. You can't feel pleasure from anything, anything that you liked before. Food, sex, walks, and meetings with friends. It seems like some inner apparatus which is responsible for this. It simply doesn't work anymore. Kirill Norton, 10 years ago, he received a clinical diagnosis, depression. Such a psychological disorder doesn't have anything to do with seasonal spells of apathy and mood swings. This diagnosis has broken many lives. A person can't go to work, communicate with others, even go out of the house becomes an insurmountable obstacle. Often one experiences suicidal thoughts. Well, the person feels like, uh, you see, well, basically, he doesn't feel anything because there is emptiness. So, there are no emotions, no feelings, except fear, anxiety, nothing. To suffer from depression, one has to have some biological basis for this. A biological constituent, a biological component of depression. Then one needs a psychological component of depression. I mean, some personal features, features of character and temperament, and there has to be a social situation. Depression may be caused by psychological as well as physiological factors. In Kirill's case, the trigger for the illness was general anesthesia. Also, an important role played the genetics. In specialist opinion, the division on pessimists and optimists is a hereditary feature. It is genetically predisposed how we would stand difficulties. According to scientists, we receive depression from our ancient ancestors. We should look for its roots in the limbic system, the so-called reptilian brain. Its main task is to secure the survival. The limbic brain is responsible for eating behavior, sleep wakefulness, regulation, sexual activity, and reaction to stress. Depression was the means to protect nervous system from overloading. During stress, the organism mobilizes and expends energy to the full, channeling it to its protection. Afterwards, the state of empty battery appears, the depression. This is a necessary period for recuperation. If the limbic system falters, the period of depression, of recharge, lingers, and it leads to a serious psychic disorder. The results of Anastasia's blood test are ready. Who remain in low mood for about a month? She wants to find the cause of her depressed state. There's a very pronounced deficiency of vitamin D, less than 20. The normal numbers are from 30. That's from 30. In order for all processes in the body to occur correctly, we all have to keep the levels of vitamin D within the range of 50 to 100 all year round. With vitamin D deficiency, one constantly remains in the state of fatigue and drowsiness. The working efficiency and the general tone of the organism become lower. The lack of the vitamin is caused by the lack of sunlight. 90% of this essential chemical is produced in our skin under the influence of ultraviolet rays. Vitamin D plays a huge role in our immune system. For example, look back to 19th century literature, for example. Young girls from well-to-do families were falling ill in vast numbers from tuberculosis. Why? Well, white skin was in fashion and they were hiding from the sun under umbrellas. As a result, there was a colossal number of tuberculosis cases amongst people of that class. Men, peasant women, didn't fall ill from tuberculosis because they didn't walk under umbrellas. Fashion didn't apply to them. 
To receive the sufficient quantities of vitamin D is not very easy. To produce the daily requirement, we have to stay in the sun for 30 minutes every day. Why does the entire world notice that people who live in our country don't smile, they're constantly in a bad mood, and they're very aggressive? Because nine months a year, we don't get any sunlight or any ultraviolet light. And ultraviolet light that's available during the summer, it's not always, well, mostly, it doesn't have that desired effect. For those who live in the northern countries, the only way to sustain the normal levels of vitamin D is to undergo a replacement therapy to take vitamin in pharmaceutical products. The endocrinologist prescribed anesthesia the medication treatment as well. Lack of sunlight, and as a consequence, the deficiency of vitamin D causes constant stress. It leads to an increase in the level of cortisol, the stress hormone. Its function is to protect the organism, to activate the cardiovascular system, to improve the working of the brain. But in its excess, cortisol inhibits other hormones, primarily sex hormones. The main anti-stress hormone in our life, in our system, is testosterone the masculine, or so-called masculine sex hormone, which not only men have, obviously, but women as well. And it plays an immense role in our lives, in men and women. Taking into account that the level of testosterone in men is much higher than in women, men withstand stress much better. Hormonal imbalance leads to decrease in the level of serotonin. This chemical performs lots of functions in the body. Among them, it influences general well-being and our attitude towards life. Its lack leads to low mood and depression. They used to call serotonin the hormone of happiness. In fact, it is a neurotransmitter which has a hormone-like effect. Unlike the hormones, which are produced by endocrine glands, serotonin is synthesized by neurons and it regulates the transmission of signals between them. In depression, the speed of neural impulses decreases, and this makes us see the world in gray colors. 90% of serotonin is synthesized in intestines from the amino acid tryptophan, which gets into our body with food. Figuratively speaking, good mood is born in our guts. Scientists have proven that mood influences our gastronomical preferences. We decided to check this with the help of our heroine, Anastasia. In the supermarket, we asked her to choose products that she consumes these last days. We asked a nutritionist to comment on the gastronomical preferences of the girl. Well, this is quite a predictable choice of someone who's in a bad mood. A lot of sweets, chocolates, marshmallows, all kinds of cakes. Actually, it's emotional hunger. It's when you go back to your childhood. When you felt low, your mom used to give you a candy or some chocolate in order to make you feel better. Doctors explain the want for sweets by the increase in level of cortisol. It stimulates the emission of glucose and insulin. Then the level of sugar decreases and one wants to replenish it with quick carbohydrates. When glucose gets into the bloodstream, it makes your pancreatic gland produce high levels of insulin. And insulin has the one side effect. It increases appetite. As a result, people start comfort eating and they do it day after day after day. Quick carbohydrates only worsen the situation. They contribute to further fluctuations in the level of sugar in the blood and destabilization of the level of insulin. And it worsens the mood even more. The nutritionist took all sweets away from Anastasia's shopping cart except for dark chocolate. It is rich in amino acid tryptophan, which stimulates biosynthesis of serotonin. All right, now let me offer to add to your cart some products that are actually scientifically proven to affect your mood levels and make you feel better. Let's go get some. 
the craving for sweets can be fulfilled by dried fruits. The natural source of tryptophan is banana, dairy product, and nuts. Amino acid omega-3 is also salutary for good mood, and it is contained in red fish and seafood. Nutritionists advise to give preference to colorful fruits and vegetables. The process of buying food, the process of cooking, they have to be accompanied by bright emotions, bright colors, tasty smells, so it has to be a separate source of pleasure. For people who are ill with depression, it is impossible to normalize the level of serotonin only with a special diet. More potent remedy is needed, antidepressants. They stabilize the level of neurotransmitters. Neural impulse frees the molecule serotonin from its repository, the synaptic vesicle, and after that, it gets to receptors. Unused molecules of neurotransmitters are returned back by special transport cells. Antidepressants block the activity of these serotonin cleaners and let the molecules of neurotransmitters stay freely in the extracellular space. Thus, its accumulation happens. There are also some drug-free means to cure depression. Apart from psychotherapy, there is a behavior therapy. One of its ways, the method of biological feedback. It allows a person to control his feelings. The indices of bioelectric activity of the brain, of cardiovascular system, of galvanic skin reaction appear on the screen. Watching them and performing some special tasks, together with the psychotherapist, the patient chooses techniques to gain some improvement in his grave condition. The essence of this method is that it is, in essence, a physiological mirror. It allows a person to see graphically his emotional reactions, his emotions in the form of some comprehensible geometrical figures, and this allows a person to realize those states which are usually inaccessible to his consciousness, and it immediately gives an opportunity to learn how to control these states. Aero yoga, or yoga in the air, it is a relatively new trend in fitness, which is designed to encourage harmony of body and mind. Asanas, or exercises, are performed in special hammocks. As during the classes of ordinary yoga, the performance of musculoskeletal respiratory, nervous and cardiovascular systems improves. But it also adds the feeling of flight. People really open up, not just physically, not just emotionally, but also internally and spiritually. But the most important thing is that it's such a surprise for people, this level of emotions. Because of the hammock, because of all the sequences we perform, people's moods get better. So they come here upset, frustrated by their everyday problems, but then everything changes during the class. And after the class, people go away inspired, enthusiastic, joyful, and happy. During the classes, meditation techniques are also practiced. According to doctors, it is a good way to learn how to control your psychological state. A person tried to be here and now, and it relieves depressive thoughts. One of the problems of a depressive person is that he constantly returns to the same repeated thoughts. Meditation is the version of trance. During trance stabilization, alignment of different parts of vegetative nervous system happens. So during meditation, it happens as well. The specifics of ant gravity yoga is that seemingly difficult overturns and elements can be performed even by those who came to the class for the first time. Anastasia, who tries to conquer a bad mood for a month, also felt positive emotional effect. Actually, at first I was skeptical. I thought I wouldn't be able to do it. I was afraid of the hammock. I felt like I was going to fall. But after I made the first turnover, all my fears and anxieties just vanished. I felt myself in the here and now. I forgot about the gray skies, about autumn, about my bad mood. 
and obviously just felt like smiling. One of the effective means to conquer a bad mood is sport. Physical exercises are perceived by our body as stress, but with the moderate approach, it does us good. The hormone endorphin is secreted. It helps to minimize the discomfort from the exercises, to block pain, and arises the feeling of euphoria. During long exercises like walking, jogging, swimming, serotonin is actively secreted. Namely, it arouses such a feeling as the second breath. On the one hand, you rise above yourself when you achieve some results, when you learn to endure, which is very important, among other things, for exiting depression. When you exercise less, it is more difficult for you to endure precisely the same episode of depression. And as far as I know, athletes rarely suffer from depression. Well, I believe that if I level my life, yes, up to such conditions, when my body will be satisfied with the world I live in, then I believe that depression will go away. Now, Kirill continues to attend group therapy and to take antidepressants. But the young man is convinced that much depends on him. A strong desire to return to normal life and experience positive emotions has to appear. Family helps simply because it distracts you. So there appear other people problems and you get out of your inner nightmares and join the real world. Depression helped Kirill to find a hobby, which then became his job. The young man does professional translations of special literature on psychic disorders. According to psychologists, activities that bring pleasure are the right way to exit depressive states. Raccoon therapy, so the visitors of this center situated near Moscow call the interaction with these animals. Here eight tame raccoons live. Their breeder noticed that her pet likes to play with people and decided to invite visitors. After such interaction, the mood improves both in raccoons and in humans. Often people come here in a horrible mood, you know, they've come through traffic, they're regretting it, but three, five minutes in, and they're smiling. Well, I mean, look, how is it possible to get close to this cutie in a bad mood? No, I mean, it's possible, but it's only for a minute. And in a minute, those eyes, those paws, all of this love, all of that makes your bad mood gone. Gone, gone, gone. It is impossible to observe without laughter how raccoons play with the visitors. It seems that they are able to amuse even the gloomiest person. Psychologists call the interaction with animals zoo therapy. It has no contraindications and always operates unfailingly. When we communicate with people, we always have this hidden fear that we will get betrayed, that this person will become our enemy. Meeting other people, we don't trust them unconditionally. We always have this inner sensor that inspects them and looks at them. But when we're with animals, we don't have that because primeval instincts come into play. Even aggression is understandable. If a dog or a tiger or a lion barks at you, you're not offended. You understand, yeah, that's his instinct. In many ways, our view of life is determined by genetics and temperament. The nervous system of different people reacts to external stimuli differently. Well-being and mood are interconnected. If a depressed state doesn't leave you for a long time, you need to turn to specialists. But in most cases, we are able to help our body to conquer sadness ourselves.